uh, here, listening to everyone, I was thinking when we think of reparation, we automatically think of money, money, uh, and it plays out here. You know, um, different kind of land settlement, land claim settlements come in the form of money often, but. Um, if we could think outside of, like, I think you're tapping into it a little bit. Um, what outside of money would be the reparation? So yeah, maybe return of land. I don't. I'm thinking. <clears throat> can we think outside of that? As <laughs> outside of that kind of value? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. But then at the same time, I know that the the sort of the money. It has such a such a value to those that have to give it up too mm -hmm. so there's something to that about as well. that as well but um, but yeah it, it connects to what you're saying too that these paintings are not are not um, wealth mm, yeah so where does the wealth where does wealth reside for you or for yeah anyway uh, I, um... philosophical <laughs> it's funny, again, emotional and, and not funny. Uh, but I just think they're not beautiful. They're, I mean, we are beautiful. And uh, uh, those artists missed out uh, the possibility of making beautiful paintings because they left out our bodies, the bodies of all the people at this table. So they're not actually beautiful. And why would you hold up something that's not beautiful? I think that's what I, playing both the white characters and the black characters, that's what I noticed the most, like, in just, yeah, that the that it is the white characters who, who seem to be drumming in this fact that he's black, he's black like, yeah. this is going to be a problem. This is Wilson's handicap, the fact that he is black mm -hmm. and now he's representing this white... Yeah. Um, what do we call him? This white defendant? defendant yeah, yeah, this white defendant who's attacked a black victim and it is always and I think even as I was like as I oh and so as a black woman now having to I'm like oh wow like because my whole thing in my life is that I don't I'm, I'm not black actually I'm actually brown if you want to get it mm -hmm. real real because mm -hmm. black is this color and that's yeah. not the color of my skin yeah. but when I live my life that's how I'm seen you know I'm just like so like I when I, pres I go out into the world the first thing people see of me is that I'm a black woman. Mm -hmm. And so like when I was reading this um, script I was like, and it kept coming up with these white characters, like, oh, this is how white people see me.
conclude. Look, you've said what you've came here for, and now I'd like you to leave. You're colored, Wilson. You've suffered like the rest of us. You can't go into court and persecute one of your own race for the sake of an anti-Negro rioter. Mr. Edison, I would like you to leave. Not until I've made myself clear. You've made yourself perfectly clear and it revolts me. Oh, it does, does it? What are you trying to put over? Take a look at your face. It's as black as mine, don't you know that? What are you after, publicity? Publicity. What are you trying to do? Show the white world that you can attack your own race just to prove you're as good as they are. I told you to get out. You can't be impartial. Don't kid yourself. I'm a lawyer, do you hear? A lawyer like any other lawyer. I've got a case and I am going to see it through. That's all that counts. Mm. You're a lawyer, a fine lawyer. You'd sell out your own people just to make sure everyone says that you're a fine lawyer. Mr. Edison, before you make me do something we are both going to regret, you need to get out. I am not going to allow you to hurt my son just so that you can make a few more white friends. I will do everything in my power to stop you. Get out! I can smash you, Wilson, if I have the mind to do it. They are right here. Charles, 1880-1940. And then... Elizabeth, mm -hmm. 1890, 18... Elizabeth Williams Garland, mm -hmm. 1891, 1954. Does that sound right? Yeah. Is that what that is? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We need to get her a, a grave new gravestone. A new grave marker. A new one? <laughs> that one? Oh my God. 1881. So she was a year younger than Charles. Yeah. No, she's 1891. Is that 1891? 91. It's a 19... Yeah, it's looking like 1954. If I could be wrong about that. Yeah, I think she died in about 54. It was, uh, I was just a baby when, um, I was born in 52. Wow. That's, well, that's, that's a, a trip right there. That's a night. That's a nine. So that's my great, great... Aunt? Aunt, mm -hmm. yep. Elizabeth Williams Garland. See, she married a Garland before she died. Yeah. And Charlie. Yeah. Yeah, he said this gravestone was a long more. Hmm? I was just saying, because this moved off of here. And this one's moved off of here. Mm, he's hit it with the lawn more, so my Right. Name. Right. And this is their, my aunt. Right? Alberta. Mm hmm See now the connection, right? Canadian peoples. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's just too cool for school. Yeah, I feel really... You were thinking, you were asking about what they're thinking. I know my grandfather's hella proud right now. Mm -hmm. I knew he was very happy. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think so. Yeah, generations later. You know, and who knows, we'll be out here one day or wherever, and we'll be looking and saying, you know, good job. You guys just keep up the good work because I see this as a mecca. People will come. There will be, I've always said that tourism will be the economic base for Nicodemus. And I really believe that because the history has already happened. And not that we're not still making history, but the important history in terms of what people did with their freedom mm -hmm. um, is exemplary in that town that's still down there. And the descendants that are, may not all be right there, obviously but all over the United States, all over the world. So that's what Nicodemus is. It, it's, it's, it lives in us, it breathes in us, and it's not just the place. It's, it's wherever we are, we take it with us. We take it with us. <laughs>